I don't have any big expectations. I'm hoping that I can really do some good and help James and uh, and the uh, staff at the hospital. I don't know what to expect because I'm not sure what's going to happen over there. We better make the hospital look better. That's what I'm looking forward to. Oh, it's Africa. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to get to talk a lot. Can God do funny things? I expect God to absolutely do the most amazing time management that I've ever seen. I try to go above and beyond what we're going there to try to do. It's going to be more primitive than we had in Gambia or Liberia, I, I, I think. I don't really know what to expect. Um... It is now 2 p.m. and we have hit the road. For very. And how many people do we have in this van? One, two, three. Everybody sound off. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow. Thirteen. What's about a ton and a half on the roof of luggage? this deep, had to get out and push the van, uh, not to mention that we went over a ferry that the truck got stuck, we had to pull it up the ramp. Uh, these are people that just happen to live in Barrie and we've, they've been helping us push and pull our van and we've been helping them. This is our first uh, medical emergency. One of the little babies that was in the truck that we're helping is going in and out of consciousness to tell us. So Dr. West is over having a look at him. And here comes this just right that close. When we got here last night, we brought with us four patients that had that were passed out or coma to passed out, unresponsive uh, from the van that was traveling with us through the mud puddles. And uh, so when we arrived, uh, we arrived with four patients at about what two a.m. No, one thirty. One thirty in the morning, and um, two children and about and a teenager and an adult. And uh, three of them, the, the three youngest ones, woke up. The baby woke up first, and then the uh, then the next oldest child, and then the teenager. But the uh, one of the women uh, stayed unconscious uh, during part of, until sometime early this morning, and she woke up. So we don't know whether they were overcome by heat, uh, exhaustion, or uh, possibly carbon monoxide. But and there's no way to do any testing for for hardly any of that. So they woke up this morning though, and, and everybody went home. So that was good. How can you even pick up that? This evening we had a patient come in here this evening, uh, probably around 20 years old, who was uh, hit by his wife with a pipe into the left leg, sustained a large laceration, must have been a jagged pipe, uh, about 5 centimeters or better, the left lower leg, came in the emergency room, and you want to call it emergency room here, 
and uh, we were called to say, hey, what's the problem with it? We came here and we said, see, that laceration with some muscle sticking out of fair um, amount of large hematoma. Uh, so the procedure here is to have the family member take him out to the hose, a bucket of water, threw it on there, and the family had a, brought a rag with them, so they cleaned it off real good. And uh, then they took him to this table outside where they've been working on him. And we had Nellie, who is a recent graduate of Southern Adventist University, an RN. She's just been here a few, few weeks, and uh, she's done some suturing, delivering babies already, but this is the first jagged uh, laceration that she was going to do. Uh, they just got done with the procedure. Uh, they gave the patient a little bit of tetanus now. Oh, by the way, there was no... Uh, uh, anesthetic uh, used. We used a little, they threw a little bit of alcohol on there because that's all they have. Rather primitive, but they did a fantastic job. Nellie was all done. Uh, they're bandaging it, and then they're going to have uh, the patient leave the uh, gurney that he's on right now so the family can take another bucket of water and clean it because I guess the family's responsible for doing that. This young man uh, has been vomiting, uh, distended abdomen, and I'll have to take off my gloves and my watch and has had uh, no bowel movement or passed any flatus for a couple of days. And uh, his abdomen is hard and distended. I don't think he has much in the way of bowel sounds. And uh, if a surgeon's watching this, please forgive me, okay? And uh, so anyhow, uh, we're going to operate on him for a bowel obstruction. We had a one month old baby girl that came in last night really short of breath and real floppy. She was not doing well at all. And so we put her on oxygen and gave her some treatments. And she wasn't really getting any better. She'd quit breathing every few seconds and we'd have to shake her and try to get her breathing again. And we spent probably three or four hours just doing this over and over and giving her treatments, trying to get her better. And as we were sitting there, this bat flew into the room and there was a ceiling fan going. The bat hit the ceiling fan, flew right onto the baby's head. So we had to pick it up set it in the sink, and go back to giving the baby its treatments. Tell us about the problem with the electricity. The problem with electricity is the only reason the generator is still on is they were doing surgery on a young boy that had a, a bowel obstruction. But as whenever the surgery was over, the generator was going to go off, and we couldn't give the baby any more oxygen. And every time we took the oxygen off the baby, she would not do well. She would quit breathing her um, oxygen level would drop down to where we didn't think she was going to make it and we got our engineering guys over here from our team to see if they could hook it up to the battery and put the baby outside the lab and run the oxygen through the window to see if we could maybe keep the oxygen on all night but we couldn't the battery would only last for an hour so by the time the um, power went off like I said we gave her as many treatments as we could we gave her some medicine to help with her lungs and the lights went out we had to hand the baby to the mom so we basically thought the baby wasn't going to make it and this morning she's still here
ceilings done and replaced and cleaned, and I think it's just gorgeous. I'm proud of it. <laughs> Voyez le bateau est au dessus de l'eau. Et qui va nous dire la pluie? Il a eu à pleuvoir pendant combien de jours? Combien d'années? Voilà. Open your mouth so we can see. Big! Come on, open your oh, mouth. Oh, there are two of them there. Oh, oh no. look, is that his mouth open? Yeah. Yep. Oh, ah. look at him. Look at that.
Yeah, three. I was impressed with how well this group gelled. Um, so many, so many disciplines represented between um, construction and plumbing and electrical and uh, accounting and medical and everybody with their all wide variety of disciplines. Everybody gelled so well. It was, it was humbling to sit back and watch that. I didn't expect to get stuck in the mud 15 times, but we saw God working in everything that happened and saw purpose in what happened to us. The group got really close. We accomplished so much in so many different ways. And just seeing God work in so many miraculous ways. And being in the mud the first night was way beyond my expectations. Um, it was much more primitive than I thought. It was not a hundred years behind, it was a thousand years behind. I was thinking about Mary and Joseph when I saw those people riding donkeys and that's their mode of transportation, small dirt roads and thatched roofs. And I thought it was much more primitive than anything I've ever seen. Far exceeded anything that I thought would happen out there. I truly believe that uh, that what we uh, accomplished out there was um, a lot more than all of us expected. I didn't ex expect all the corruption. It, it's, it was worse here than it was in the other places.